I'm going to talk about something incredibly thrilling that you're all really excited about, which is quality assurance. Um, so to make this slightly less skull-crushingly boring, I thought we could do a impromptu demo against one of your company's websites. So who feels like their company website is up to, to the challenge? Maybe search functionality, perhaps an email newsletter subscribe, maybe a simple sign up. Do I have any takers for some live testing during the uh, session? Literally no takers tonight. OK, here we go. All right. OK, so let's, uh, let's do this. So what is your company? One second, all right, that's, so I'm just going to whiz through. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demo all this in a second, but this is, I, I just came up with this on the fly, this idea. So it's definitely a great one. OK, so, so what company do you represent? A-H-M-A-D. A-H-M-A-D. E-U-S. E-U-S. Dot com. Oh, Amadeus? Yes. OK, and what is your production URL? Oh, you already said it, right, there we go. Okay, is it HTTPS? No, HTTPS. Okay, cool. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using our own internal account and I'm creating a temporary site environment for Mr. Amadeus. And let's now create a test. So on amadeus.com, uh, what kind of functionality do we have that would be fun to test, slash that you're really confident in? <laughs> <laughs> Amadeus.com. Okay, I will. Let's find something together. Technology boutique. Do you have any kind of way that uh, uh, a user could interact with your site? A form they could submit, something like that. No. no. Oh. Well, no, oh, that's boring. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I want. I want. I want. You know, kind of. I want something to be on the line. You know what I mean? Anyone else? Is there anyone else who's not Workbench or Amadeus that has? There we go. You, sir. Dynamic yield. Yield. OK, let's do this. And do you, ha you have some sort of sign up form or something we can use? Yeah. Perfect. OK, perfect. Lovely young man there. So let us just quickly create this. OK, so I'm just going to go back to my sites. So let's just use Amadeus. OK, so now let's create a new test for this. So you have a, you have a, demo, a demo submit, is that correct? So I'll tell you the truth. I just looked at the website that you just pulled up, and I think we just launched a new website today, actually. So it's, uh, it's not even disaster. Perfect. <laughs> so, so let's hope either you're the CEO or the CEO doesn't watch this. So OK, so this is dynamic yield. Can we see this? So get a demo, perfect. Tell us a bit about yourself. Why not? OK, so let's start on the home page. And so I should probably introduce Rainforest before I get into all this too much. <laughs> so Rainforest is simple QA as a service. So if you think about QA as falling into a few categories, one of those categories is what's known in the QA world as checking. And it's pretty much what it sounds like, checking stuff to make sure that it works. These lovely gentlemen who were here earlier are doing stuff from the code analysis side, so testing from the bottoms up, you could say, and we're testing from the interfaces down. So we're driving your applications as if we we're a user and uncovering bugs by doing that. Uh, standard terms that are thrown around are things like regression testing, integration testing, functional testing. That's what Rainforest does. So we have a demo. So one of the key premises of Rainforest is that we use actual, real, live, living and breathing humans to do our testing. Um, but we use a crowd of these humans so that it's incredibly fast, hopefully fast enough that we can test this during the demo. So Are you a bunch of fake leads yes. Will that be a problem? Uh, that's not great, but it's not a problem. OK. <laughs> there we go, guys. We're in a social contract now that cannot be broken. OK, so, so since, since 
actual humans execute these tests for us, what we can do is we can do exactly what we'd tell a human. Think of a semi-technical person, maybe your aunt or your father or something. What would you tell your father? I would tell him, Dad, can you click get a demo and then just fill out the form and does it work, right? That's totally valid. That's a completely valid test case in Rainforest. So click the get a demo button. Do you see a demo form? And so I should say here that most of the people that own Rainforest inside our customers mostly are product managers semi-technical people who oversee the entire product process. And so Rainforest has been designed from kind of the ground up to be really friendly to those kind of people and not super scary and all automation cody. Um, so once we have this lovely demo form, then we just want to fill it out with relevant details. Click contact us. So let's do that. Fill out the form. Click contact us. And then what happens when you do that? Great troll, I love that. Um, so let's just say, did it work? Hopefully that's evident. Um, which browsers are you particularly concerned about, good sir? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't All of them, that sounds like. So let's do this. Um, so, so let's run this test. So I'm using Rainforest kind of like a real customer does. So I can just click there, click run this test. Any time of the day or night, 24-7, 365 days a year, this will start getting farmed out to real testers. And hopefully, within about 10 minutes, we'll get our results. So we're going to run this against your production environment. And let's just do all the browsers. Actually, no, I feel bad for your, your marketing team. Let's do a couple of IE browsers, because we usually find bugs there. Ho, ho. And then, yeah, let's just do that. All right, so we'll run this one test. There we go. So that has an ETA of 5.39 PM in PST. So hopefully it gets done before then. OK, so with that little rather long preamble, let's actually get into the, <laughs> the, uh, the demo slash deck. So um, a little bit about the company. We were founded in 2012. We went through Y Combinator. We raised a small, modest amount of money at the end of last year. We're backed by uh, Andreessen, who obviously everyone knows, and uh, Jason Lemkin. Maybe some of you guys know him. He's kind of like SaaS Jesus on the West Coast. Um, and we're based in a mixture of San Francisco and the world. So we actually have a fully remote engineering team. We have people in Singapore and people in Ukraine and people all over the world. Um, so what's the problem? So QA is kind of stuck in the 90s. Um, we like to use the metaphor or the analogy of kind of infrastructure and servers when we think about QA. And so if you think about how far we've come over the past five years, now we have Heroku, right? Git, push, Heroku is how one deploys software today. Maybe not for all of you guys, but you know, the median developer. Now, if you think about QA, we're still, we're still at the level of advancement of like buy a server, the server is the QA guy, by the way, buy a server, put it in your office, and it sits there with a fixed capacity, right? So like, that's where QA is today. And of course, we have some automation. We have some unit testing. We have a bunch of other innovations. But fundamentally, hum uh, QA is still a human-bound problem. So basically, we've set out to try and fix that. Um, and so the solution is a rocket. No, so the solution is. Um, Basically, something that can give you really fast answers to the fundamental question of like what is broken, really fast, so fast that actually you one can hook it into your continuous deployment workflow, and have it be completely on demand and have it be very easy to manage your test cases. So, with most of our customers, the product management teams own the test cases. In many cases, they directly import a user story from like Jira or whatever they're using. They can then run that as an actual test directly. And then the DevOps teams will hook in Rainforest into the production deploy. So every time your team deploys new code, we run through your full set of regression tests in 20 or so minutes, and you, we block it if there's any bugs. So, and we have this kind of nasty graphic. So how the deuce does this all work is what you're probably thinking. So a pretty simplified version is that when we run the test, as we, as we have with this, this young gentleman right now, 
what we do is we farm it out to three human testers per browser. And these human testers are working in a virtual machine we give them. So regardless of what they're doing, we can show them Windows NT 2000 with IE8, or we can show them Android with the latest version of Chrome or whatever. And so these testers will execute that test that I just wrote um, within the virtual machine. They will report bugs. They will say everything works, whatever they say. That's then fed back into a results algorithm. Um, and so what we do there is we look for a certain level of confidence of basically a quorum. So we look for agreement between those individual testers. And that quorum is based on reputation. So every single tester, and to give you an idea of scale, we have about 50,000 monthly active testers. If we look on our front page, we have some live stats there. So right now, we have 545 testers like testing right now, probably some of whom are for our, our friend. And then the last 24 hours, we've seen about 6,000 testers. Um, and so basically what happens is every single one of those guys has their reputation. And over time, everything they do within our system affects this reputation. And so you can kind of think of what we do on the technological side as like having a 50,000 person QA team that's managed entirely programmatically. So all of the things that you have to do as managers of your glorious people, incentivization, compensation, you know, the carrot, the stick, all of those things we do, but at an arm's length, basically using machine learning. Um, and so that's kind of what we have on the back end. So, um, and then the scale thing, so now demo. So, We've already kind of done a bit of the demo. Um, I'll show you a few other things here. So we have our test in progress, and it looks like we already have some results here. So down the right, you can see the individual testers. These are these natty avatars. Um, let's have a look. Oh, nice. So we actually got a failure. Um, <laughs> so, so we'll come back to that, because that's not quite complete yet, I don't think. Let's have a look. So it's 33% done, so basically, Showing that failure means, and I'll just show you, showing that failure means that one of the testers that's gone through that, so these are the three testers, right? Um, and this tester with the long name has already gone through it and has replied other. Now, that means something weird went on, um, and the other two are still in progress. So we don't yet know if this is a verified failure until we have agreement between the three testers. So we'll come back to this once we get to 100% completion. Um, if I go to some results that we've run, so if I look at, uh, let's go to this guy down here. Um, so this, there are a lot of failed tests here. Let's find a past test, perhaps. Um, so this is the view that you would look at as a product manager, as someone working in DevOps, as someone who owns the release of software. And so about 80% of our usage today is programmatically triggered, right? So in most cases, it's triggered by a company saying, hey, I'm ready to deploy to production, and then Rainforest getting run by typically their CI system just programmatically as part of that deploy. Now, most people run Rainforest in a blocking capacity so that if Rainforest finds any bugs, the deploy is halted. Um, and so the key thing here, right, is moving QA back into this world where most of us live for most of the time, which is that all of the crucial parts of our kind of business and software processes are consumed on demand, programmatically, whenever we want, right? So really, we're trying to bring QA kind of into that world. So if we look at perhaps a failed test up here, so check, tag, save is one that I like to look at. So if we click expand, what we can see is each of the individual steps that makes up that test, each of the browsers that the test was run against, and then whether it passed or failed and where exactly. So if we look at a pass, we can see here that we have had actually a bunch of testers go through here. And so the two that were approved by Rainforest, these guys, so Maria Moreno and some sort of German name that I can't pronounce, these guys both passed the test. So if we scroll down here, what we can see, and so just to help you interpret this, uh, each column is a, is a different human tester, and each row is one of the steps that we talked about. And so here you see the screenshots from the execution of the test within our virtual machines. So each step of the way, we can see exactly what each tester was doing. Um, and so we can verify that they've done the right thing. We can check the UI. If they report a bug and we're like, what does that mean? I'm not expecting that. We can actually drill in and verify whether it's correct or not. Um, and so in this case, these two guys passed it. Um, and their reputation was such that our quorum algorithm decided, yes, we're confident enough in this result to pass the test back to the customer. 
Now, what you can see here is our third test, Ahara, was actually rejected by Rainforest because he failed the test. Now, for whatever reason, he disagreed with the other guys, and we've decided that these other guys were actually correct. Now, this is based on a ton of stuff which we can get into maybe in the Q&A or maybe after, maybe never, but basically, our whole job is to provide trusted results to our customers. And so if you kind of zoom out a bit and think about how QA works, really what we're driving towards is this notion that QA can just be this painless, effortless part of deploying software, right? Just like serve infrastructure is today for at least the smaller companies and slowly bubbling up into the larger companies, right? Just like server infrastructure is today where you don't want to build a 20-person sysadmin team because you can have those guys be DevOps. And maybe five years from now, you have them just be devs. Um, and so we want to do exactly the same thing on the QA side. We want to make it so that really, QA doesn't have to be a core competency for your company. You can just have that happen as part of kind of releasing software. Um, so that's kind of a quick overview there. Um, if we drill into the test itself, we already kind of looked at this a bit. But just to kind of refresh your memory here, um, the test is made up of, of individual steps, these numbered guys. And so each step is in natural language. And so it's comprised of an action and a question. So do x, did y happen? Um, and so one thing to note here, which is, is quite interesting compared to maybe the other approaches towards QA, one thing to note is that the level of granularity or abstraction is completely up to the customer. So it's completely valid to have a test which says, sign up, did it work? It's also totally valid to address that same part of your application in an incredibly granular fashion, right? So enter this string into this input. Do you see this precise thing happen? And we're completely agnostic as to how you format these test cases, because our testers can handle either. Um, and so I guess one more thing I would like to show you before we go back and see if we actually found any bugs um, is the tester interface, so you can get an idea of how this works. Um, so the interface that the testers see is like this. And so what you see here is you see a virtual machine in the browser in the OS that I chose. Um, and then you see up here, if I just click this guy, you see up here the test interface that they see, right? So one of these steps formatted as the action and the question. Yes, no, the step is not clear or other. And then the interface down here. Um, and so really what you can see here is that what we're trying to do is take out a lot of the complexity out of QA. Right? Because we're trying to say, rather than hire you know, 20, 30, 100 highly trained, highly qualified QA folks who take 48 hours to turn around your suite of regression tests, instead, let's abstract most of the complexity away into the platform so anybody who just vaguely understands technology can be a tester for us. Uh, and if any of you are looking to make some side money, this can be a good way to do it. Um, so finally. Let's have a look here at our result from earlier, and let's see if we have anything yet. So let's take a look here. So we're passing. Oh, OK. So it looks like I messed up uh, <laughs> and ran this against Rainforest's actual demo site. So you're off the hook tonight, sir. We didn't find any bugs. I just messed up the demo. Um, so with that, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>